executions are on the rise in several parts of the world. Why do we think this is? Well, um, good evening. Um, executions are on the rise in a number of countries, but this is a very small fraction of the world. And if you look at the, the global statistics, you can see that the majority of the world, the vast majority of the world, has either abolished the death penalty altogether or have ceased to carry out executions. We count over 175 countries that fall into this category. There are only 34 countries who continue to execute, and of those, only 11, and you've named some of them, um, are regarded as persistent executors in that they carry out more than five or 10 executions every year. So it's a very small fraction of the world that um, is creating this um, increase in executions. I mean, as we've mentioned, China, the Middle East, parts of Africa, but it's important not to forget places like the US where the death penalty still exists in many states, even though it's not actioned. Well, again, I mean, the US, um, the numbers in the US are going down. Um, last year, there were 18 executions carried out in six states. Um, and as you said correctly, 27 um, states still retain the death penalty. But of 14 of those 27 states haven't carried out an execution for more than 10 years. So even in the US, the trend, if you look at the, the wider trend, the wider trend is towards abolition of the death penalty. So um, the world is moving quite quickly away from capital punishment. And this was witnessed by the abolition of the death penalty in Ghana just two days ago. Um, and the continent of Africa, um, whilst it's not entirely death penalty free, many, many states have moved away from capital punishment quite rapidly. Why do you think some countries retain it? Um, because they see it as the ultimate punishment. It, it's the, the, the hardest message that they can send out. And equally, um, why are some countries moving away quickly from it? Is, that, is it a populism message that they want to send out to their public? Yeah, I think that the, the countries that have abolished the death penalty, if you look at it from, from that side, first of all, um, the majority of these countries do it on the basis that they accept that the death penalty is ultimately a violation of fundamental human rights principles, but also that no criminal justice systems are perfect, that every single criminal justice system in the world is prone to error um, and mistake, and that it's simply not possible um, to maintain a perfect criminal justice system. Um, and for that reason alone, uh, many countries have moved away from the death penalty. There's also another understanding that, um, and this has been, been um, evidenced through social science, that the death penalty doesn't make societies any safer. Um, there's no evidence whatsoever um, that the death penalty has a special deterrent effect over and above um, sentencing people to imprisonment. So I think that the majority of the world who have moved away from the death penalty have done so on a rational basis. Um, and it's interesting that you mentioned populism, because in a lot of those countries, it was felt that it would be very difficult to move away from capital punishment because the majority of the people may support the death penalty. But in reality, um, once countries move away from capital punishment, very quickly that shifts public opinion and the public very quickly come to accept abolition um, and that norm. So that is um, how the majority of the world have dealt with the death penalty. Um, in countries like Singapore, which you mentioned, um, Singapore maintains that the death penalty is an effective deterrent to uh, drug trafficking, for example. But drug traffickers still cross the border. Um, and ultimately, these are effectively drug mules, drug traffickers, um, smugglers. Um, but the chain of smuggling never stops. So um, it seems counterintuitive to say that the death penalty provides any deterrent effect to that particular crime. OK, Sol Lefroyne from the Death Penalty Project UK, thank you very much for your insights.